I got the man, got the myth, got the legend, Cam Beans, and the episode starts right now. Step onto a world where there's no one left but the very best no MC can test. <laughs> Not my best work. Yes, yes, y'all. You don't stop. With me today, I have volley beach volleyball sensation, former junior idol player and the program director for Chesapeake Elite Volleyball Academy, Cameron Beans. What's good? Not much, brother. How are you? Cool, man. You were talking about, um, before we got on the podcast, you were talking about how you wanted to make a trip on uh, to Ho Ohio for like a weekend tournament. But yeah. but you, yeah, you, from what you're saying, Maryland's is locked down like Rikers. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy. All this COVID stuff definitely has us beach players try, trying to do what we can and do what we love, you know. But in the same sense, just trying to play safe, but in the same sense, running my own volleyball club right now, everything's going full speed. So, Got to be able to put some priorities for others, but in the same sense, I'm still trying to play and do what I got to do. So, yeah, man. Do you have um, indoor beach facilities out there? So there's a few, a lot of them more toward like the Nova area, so down south toward Northern Virginia. Um, there's a few in D.C., but it's it's hard to get to. But you know, that's the one thing we're trying to grow here in the D.M.V. is not only the beach volleyball game, but you have colleges like Stevenson University. You have a brand new facility, um, and a lot of other surrounding indoor schools are trying to do the same thing. So yeah, Stevenson people, not to be confused with Stevens, um, pretty competitive university, man. Especially particularly at the time when um, I think you were playing a Juniata, I think 2013 or 2014. Yeah, I think. Yep. Um, Educated my West Coast people on D3 volleyball, which, by the way, like probably has more more European professional contracts than anybody. <laughs> these these are just it is crazy. savages. It is we crazy. can we and we could tell them why in a minute. But but back then I was thinking Stevens Tech. Stevenson was coming up. Um, Juniata, I think, was the five seed. Um, New Paltz, Tony yep. Bonilla's kid, Tony Bonilla Jr. Yeah, man, man. chip off the old block, handsome as fuck. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, I got one one for New Paltz, and I was very happy for Tony because Tony and I go way back. I was at um, I don't know if you know, I was at Hunter College for a cup of coffee in um, 1994. And 1994, there were so few like CUNY teams; there were only four. Right. Um, so all of the best talent had to funnel to Baruch or Hunter, or um, there was no Lehman. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was just um, I think it was Baruch, Hunter, City, and York, and John yeah. Jay had a had a team for like a smidget, but um. Yeah, six teams were invited to EIVA from G3. They were Juniata, they were the one, um, NJIT, which was, which is, who's actually Division One now. Um, Vassar, who was the only team yep. to make it to the EIVA finals. That was Brent Starks, NYU, um, us, and New Paltz. So, mm -hmm. so really competitive teams. Concordia had a program back then. Um, yeah. Southampton had a good program. East Strasburg University, more, more towards your zip code, if you will. Yeah. Um, Roger Williams had a pretty good team, powerhouse D3 team, but not anymore. But but the reason why I'm even bringing it up is because like all of these all of these players, like everybody's like, oh, why is he talking about D3? Because listen up, people. Division one men's volleyball only offers 4.5 scholarships. Okay, it's not like women where Division one, Division two, and Division three are, are there's this clear definition between them. So now. If you're not going to get a full ride, the student got to come before the student athlete, which is why Springfield produces a lot of professional overseas contracts, which is why um, a, a team like Lewis can win the NCAA championship, which they got they got vacated. But but you really can't unring that bell, you know, same thing with no. Hawaii they got. So so um, you were a freshman at Juniata um, and I know you got a little bit of playing time. How good was that team? Man, I mean, my freshman year was it definitely, definitely was great going to play for the, at that time, the national team, you know, one of the national team coaches and Kevin Moore and, um, you know, our, our coaching staff was phenomenal. But I mean, I was surrounded by some of the best guys in the country. Um, so, you know, I had a supporting cast of Matt Elias, who is we're now one of the best setters, if, if not in the, on the East Coast, um, surrounded by Joe Bortak, big 6'7 middle, yep. uh, Paul Kuhn on the outside, Ross Matt has another 6'7 outside. Um, you know, Chad Boswick. I mean, we had tons of talent. Um, and at that point, we had not only six or seven guys who were 
all capable of go playing D1 ball, but we had 14, 15 guys who all had offers to go play other way. Um, even incoming freshmen who were with me, Tommy Kiesling um, and, and Kyle, who was also over here from Maryland as well. Uh, we all had offers to go other places, but we all knew that what the program was able to bring and the level of competition inside of not only our conference, but the D3, you know, the, yeah. the legacy of Springfield and everyone else. It's like, man. But not to you know, mention the teams you got to play twice, right? You Like yeah. Penn, Penn State, you got to play twice, right? And I mean, right. Penn State was really good back then. I don't know what the hell they are now. Um, but by the way, your setter, prop, definitely the best setter in the history of Juniata. Like, I go back that far. Um, and I, yeah. I, I, I He's not just a flinger. He's an accurate flinger. Some people yeah. do this to fool the block. Okay, you fool the block, but you still sold out your fucking hitter. You know, no, right. this, this guy, that guy's for real. I really like that. Yeah, guy. Um, he's legit. Yep. Um, yeah, so, you, so, you, so St. Francis, PA, that's always a tough yeah. team to beat. Um, yeah, so I mean, like, all those schools up in the PA area were tough. Um, you know, we got to play Mason yeah. and some of those other schools as well. But, you know, I think the coolest part of going to D3 of only not only our freshman year, but hosting the national championship in our gym my freshman year um, and being thrown into, I was always told I was kind of that guy that was, you know, Cameron, do, do the late work for us. So anytime yeah. we went to down a set, down two sets, uh, was definitely more so my time to shine. Yeah. Um, and then New Paltz in the semifinals down 0-2 and, you know, got the okay from our head coach uh, who just came in, Pat, at that time. And, Say, so, you know, Cam, lead, lead us the way. And all of a sudden, I ended up winning in five and leading our team in kills. It was, it was, it was a good day. It was a, it was a hell of an experience, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and again, you know, New Pulse, was, New Pulse was a real deal. New Pulse was a real – that was a real volleyball team, man. That was – Yeah. You know, and they've always been that way. I mean, I mean, Division three in the 90s, no one paid attention. Like, I think there was a setter that probably played – college for seven years i think he played three years at hunter and four years at whatever and like yeah. no, you know i'm like nah that's just the same first and last name and i'm like tony right. tony you can't do I'm, I'm i feel like i'm oh my god i'm outing him on a podcast so i'm like tony that dude played for hunter man he played with elvis okay <laughs> you, you, <laughs> how is he playing against me right now how, and, and and what's up with these identical twins <laughs> you know sky and shadow <laughs> the holden brothers they were one's lefty yeah. one's right he's both of them six eight but um, so a cool story since you said the O2 Concordia, right? Powerhouse program, yeah. farm farm oh, yeah. players. I'm in the village in New York, right? This is 1994. I just got out of the military, so, and I'm chilling with this girl in in, in the West Village, and she's like, "Don't you have a game at six? And I'm like, "No, oh, it's at seven. We got time. We got time, right?" <laughs> and she's like, "Don't you want to go early and warm up?" I said, "I get there at six. We'll be all right, you know." So, I get on the train. And then all of, the, all of a sudden, the train says it's not stopping at 68th Street. So now, from 59th Street all the way to 125th, I got to take a train all the way back down. So now I'm I'm late, I'm late for warm up time, <laughs> you know, or I'm late when the coach when the coach told you to bring your ass there. Right. So then I'm taking a train all the way back down. I get there like 625, and I look through the window. Hunter Hunter has those little bubble windows, right, that you look through or whatever. And my team just lost the first set, 16-14. It turns out they started at six. <laughs> and you see the team like this, and I'm like, ooh. Because we had talent, but we didn't um, – uh, and we had some depth, but – like certain positions, right. like I was a oppo. Um, I was well, I'm a I'm a setter for a hundred years, but I was a oppo because I'm lefty and the coach put me there. Right. And I came in and Bill Anderson, he was Ball's assistant later. Um, he was a he was a one off at Hunter. I said, Coach, um, I had a um, I had a test, <laughs> and he's just like, just get changed. So I think I'm getting on the second set because I'm a starter. Nope, sit down. Right. And then we lose the second set even worse, like fifteen four, and then. We get on the third set, and this team's huge. They're like big dudes. Um, and Hunter, everyone's 6 2 across the board. We just knew how to touch block, redirect, and give it to our star hitter, Greg Romulus, and it gets the kill. Um, and then I get on the court, and I'm like, I'm just going to be as fucking loud as possible. I'm, every play, I'm just going to whoop it up. And you know how big waves crash, but but like oh, there's, yeah. there's these rare animals that start up and stay up as long as the team has their back. And my team had my back, right. and I stayed up. Won, won the third set, 15 4. And now all that energy, all the players are like, Concordia's like, we're going after that guy because I put it all on me, even though I wasn't the most talented player. Greg, our, 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 Greg was. Um, then we, we, we hang on, 15-11. And then I'm only saying this because I, I want you to follow up with a story because I know you got one in your head right now. So 
he asked me to hit outside and Greg to block their best hitter, Oppo. So I, I move over. We get the touch we need. And you see everyone say, everyone's screaming, like, set outside, set outside. They set me. Boom, I get roofed. <laughs> and now it's 14. <laughs> you know, that was for the match. We're at 14, 13. And I'm just right. like, you know, fast break volleyball. Is it worth it? Let yes. me work it. Oh, roofed. And then 14 up. I didn't see the play, my setter call. My the, the my setter called um, basically like a 31. It was going to be like a back one for my middle and the oppo. I was an oppo, so I could hit. You have to hit everything. So I'm so we were supposed to run a shotgun or a 31, and then our star hitter was supposed to go swing all the way out and hit the four. Instead, I thought it was the four. I was the four. So they said outside, both of us try to hit the four at the same time. <laughs> I fucking stiff arm um, my, my guy. And I hit the ball right off of off of someone's hands and it goes way back towards the wall and they bring it back. And then they, we sit outside again and I'm just like, great, great, you know, rescue us. <laughs> they hit out, uh, but the ref calls a touch. They get a yellow oh. card. And then me and Justin Stack, who you might know, uh, play with yeah. the team. Me and Justin Stack double block that best hitter, and that was the game. So um, give me a give me like a cool situation where you had to come in. Oh, I so, know I got you revved up. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the one of the cool moments, um, you know, outside of the national semifinals, um, you know, playing earlier on, I'll even stick with my college career, um, you know, yeah, though yeah. short lived is, you know, one of those things where yeah, going in <laughs> late, <laughs> going in late in the fourth set, we were down uh, one set to three or one to two came down. I think we were down 20, like 13. So our coach Ooh. subbed in all three of us freshmen. So it was me, Tommy Kiesling and, and Kyle, another local big middle. So we go in, we battle back, we win the fourth. And I mean, it was just, I just knew I'm one of those guys. Anyone's ever seen me play? I play with a ton of energy. When I was younger, I used to just be an even more, just more of an animal. I used to be also just an asshole. So I used to just run my mouth and just get it going. Well, every all of a sudden, everyone started just following behind us, and everyone on the court was a freshman or sophomore: Chad Boswick, Matt Elias, myself, Tommy Kiesling. Okay. I mean, we're all young, so yeah. we're like, we have nothing to lose. We're just going out there, just slanging it. Come back, win the fourth. We go back into the fifth. Then all of a sudden, Paul Kuhn is injured at this point. Joe Bortak, I think, had just come out, come back in the game. And <laughs> fifth set, it was like 13-13. I'm in the back where I was feeling it. I think I was in like 500 going to the fifth set. Go in, I tell Elias, hey, set me the big over top the middle. I'm going to crush it for us to go up plus one. was so confident. I looked up, three blocks of McDonald's, blast through it. goo just get housed. <laughs> just, I was like, 15-14. Ah. I said, hey. Same play, but run Chad on 31. They're going to commit. Just run it straight through the middle. Yeah. Go back through. I get set. Boom. He score 15-15. Now, all of a sudden, we have Joe Bortek in the front row. We have who was that time running as an opposite force, coming in as a right side. Chad Boswick in the middle. And I think we had Justin Waldorf on the outside. So now we're talking about all these big guys who are just, just destroying the ball. And I said, look, guys, all we got to do is put the ball in play, one play, and just give the ball to Joe on the right side and just let him just go to work on it. Well, the rest of the game was set because all we had to do was get two stops, and it came from our libero with the dig, our setter got a dig, and it was a wrap. Joe oh, ended nice. it with, you know, a lot of big plays. But it comes down to, you know, you get that, you start to get that fever. You're like, dude, just feed me the ball. I don't care where I am. Just give me the ball. Especially yeah, me being only 18 at the time. I wanted every bit of the heat. I got, if I lost, it was on me. If I got house, it was on me. But, and you know, I, you know, that's and that's what I always liked about you. Like, there are players that say, "Put it on me," or, or, or like, "Hop on, I'm gonna carry this team on my back this game." And this is a fun thing to say, okay? And, and it's a fun thing to even sell and get people to believe you. But there's at some point, there's got to be a time to deliver, right? And there and there comes a right. time where people stop rewarding you for potential. Um, but something I've always liked about you is if you say, "Set me the ball," I'm gonna get you a kill this one. You, um honestly believed it and honestly when i see that temperament in you the next player the next two plays i haven't seen what you haven't delivered you i see it seems like you always deliver of course you know yourself better than i know you and you'd be like yeah nah, i blasted one out but but the cool <laughs> thing is it wasn't uh, you didn't have a problem putting the weight on your shoulders 
You never have that problem yeah. putting the weight on your shoulders. I'm going to show a video later on. I'm going to show clips um, um, because I was doing some searching. But um, my favorite one, I'm just going to tell you ahead of time, is you and Ladig playing um, Ricardo and Kane. Um, nice highlight thing. And that just, I never seen, I don't know what the hell the score was, but I never seen two teams that were so, that look so evenly matched only because you served a space. You know how you're like streaky sometimes? Your, yeah. your served a space is really, is, was really good. And you, and you actually got a couple of aces in the beginning. Um, but be, actually before I do, I think I have the clip I was talking about. Let me see if I got it right here. This is from 94. Oh man. So let's see if I got it. Let's, let's see if this, let's see if my computer keeps freezing on me. Ah, uh, boo. Come on, dude. Ah, uh, okay. I guess it's, guess it's not going to happen. It keeps circling, doing a damn circle. Sorry. All right. So before we before I drive us too far off the cliff, talk to me a little about Ch Chesapeake um, Elite Volleyball Academy um, and what the mission is there. Is it is it to help people with uh, recruiting showcases, recruiting yeah, videos? Yeah, so talk, I mean, talk this is my, talk to my sorry, audience this about is that. Year, um, and you know, being out of the DMV area is that you're surrounded by the powerhouse club, almost up and down the east coast of Metro, mm -hmm. uh, Metro Volleyball Club, and they've they've been the name in the DC Maryland area for so long. Uh, and me being so hungry at 19, I said, you know, I want to I want to be able to showcase what I can do as a coach. Yep. Um, and our big thing is our mission is to show that we are a college ready program, you know, that no, we don't have 30 teams or no, we don't have an East and a West or anything else. But, you know, we have the coaching staff that is so unique and so talented that has experience. Um, but on top of that is our, our promotions and connections are it's unreal. Um, we have kids who have gone and played at the highest of levels and kids who are now been all Americans, uh, you know, graduate our last class, we actually just graduated college. And some of them, we took a red shirt year. I've, I've had almost nine to 10 all Americans now. Um, you know, we have a lot of young kids who are sophomores right now, including, uh, Sydney Lewis who over at Delaware state, who is a first team all conference as a freshman, as a middle, um, you have Kennedy Muldrow who's over at Stetson down South, uh, doing their thing down there in Florida. Um, I mean, we have kids all over the country. So our big thing is, you know, it's it's a thing that we take take to heart, that we try and promote our kids to the best of the best. And that it's not about, you're not a number, your name, and it's a family thing. So we want everyone to make sure that it's about, it's a longevity. I want to know who you are and what you're doing after you're done playing college. Yeah. So yeah, man, that's what we do. How long you been at that? This was our sixth year. Uh, so I've been going now. It's, it's, we're just starting to get going, starting to get revved up. You know, we talked about, you know, facility, getting into the next steps, into the next blocks. Um, but yeah, dude, we are producing. We have, we have the talent. We have the kids we want. Um, you know, we, we def, we're definitely moving in the right direction. But you're number six this year, man. I like that, dude. I mean, I think um, the thing I, I like about you as a player and I guess my question, it's, it's said way to this, to the question, you um, play for money, right? The higher, the higher you finish, the more money you make. That's how our sport right. is. It's not like tennis where everybody, you could suck and everybody gets a check, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> or, or golf, right? Um, they, you get paid to play, but you don't get paid to care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The caring. Right comes free right. of charge how much of that mentality as a player and the way you 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 know what i'm saying you embrace your partner you're always picking your partner up you're you're doing these things you're you're in a player's tent you know what i'm saying you yeah. chill with everybody you're, you're you're respected and beloved because you treat everybody the same across the board uh, um yeah. i don't mean the shit on my west coast people and east coast virtue <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what i'm saying no just just the right. same person with everybody you know what i'm saying like, yeah i um, mean like um, that's the thing is like you said you know me as a player uh playing with some of the best guys up mm -hmm. and down on both coasts i'm uh, playing against them as you you, st you start to learn that you know this sport and the game what we do it's more about you know how much time you put in is what you're going to get out. And I express that to my athletes, you know, is that uh, this is for what we do from the club aspect, from a coaching side, is that mm -hmm. we, we lift and we train, we do everything else. But even then from the professional side, for me personally, is I'm putting in four or five days a week of lifting and training and then going and putting in the time to go make sure that I'm not just chasing to go play. I chase to go make sure I'm chasing after W's. That's the same thing we teach to our kids, man. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, yeah, cause I got the same thing. I'm, I'm, um, I have an indoor, I have various indoor and outdoor gigs here, and um, oh my God, sorry, I'm still trying to find the damn video, but um, 
evolution, the first year I coached them, this is 2016. Um, we went to we 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 were seated 41st in California SCVA, which is like middle of the pack. Right. And me, I told them I said, my jux is to win nationals, and everyone thought I was crazy. They're like, okay, this guy's rookie. He's a rookie, right? He's from he's from New York. He don't know no better, you know. Right. So, um, we go from 41st, and then we start climbing up every week. Us and another team 949. Every week we're. 40th now with 30 this now with 30 you know the true meritocracy of climbing up right. every tournament um it was us and two it was 949 and, and um forza um and then when we get to nationals we play Cincy attack they're the fifth seed in the whole tournament we beat them 2-0 um and now we take their fifth seed we take their five spot um we lost actually a game in pool but we won the tie which is that's right. just the testament to, to uh, my team my team's stupidity and my and my bad coaching um <laughs> um and um, we ended up having to have a playing game for gold, right? Like if you win gold, the, the worst you can finish is fifth. And we play right. San Juan. San Juan uh, has a really good 16s team and, and a magnificent 17s team that could, that could beat a lot of the 18s. We're down 9-14, game three. We come back, we tie the game 14 up. And I basically told him, I said, listen, just they're going to run a lob. Just double up on the lob. My, my, I said, my guy playing position one, this is the one game you get to cheat up like the girls. I'm going to swing position six for the, for the over the top or for the, for the deflection. Um, right. Position five, just stay. Position four, move back. Move, move way the F back. Right. Um, put us in a position, if they don't hit it, it's going to hit us. I said, but the reason why the lob works is because they're running the red so fast. Um, and I told my guy, I said, you're probably, if they're insisting, you're probably going to be one-on-one. -on -one. I said, if you can't get this guy, let it go. If you can't get him, uh, if you're drifting and, you, and and if you can't get him, he's going to wrist away and, you know what I'm saying, it's going to hit the ground out of bounds on our side or your side. I said, but if you can get him, get him. And he, and, we, and it's exactly what happened. It back set. It was fast. My boy flew. Um, and he hit it off of his hands and it went out. They went wide. And I was just like, shit, it's too bad. And then they got the last point on ace. And it was just one of those games where – I was just, uh, it was so emotional for the families, the Puerto Rican families and this and that. And the coaches were catching a freaking heart attack because they never even heard of us. They never even heard of us, right? Uh, right. So, and, and they were they were up one set zero. They were leading, you know, 16-9, the second set. So, you know, they, we go to shake hands and I'm just like, come on, come on, give me a hug. Come on, I'm going to shake hands. But when I left, I cried my fucking eyes out. <laughs> I cried my fucking eyes out. And, we, and you know, the team, to, the parents took us out to our restaurant later. And I start sitting down and I start fucking crying. And I just get up and leave. And I go to the bathroom. To, you know, get your stuff together. You know, And then throw some water on my face and I'm okay. I think I'm okay, right? And then I go sit back down. And like, Duh. It was just, it was just a dumb problem to have. But, but that's just a testament to sometimes you see these kids and, and on this, from a skill perspective, we always know we're going to do our job. I mean, we're, the younger you are, the more you're in the X's and O's. But then you start thinking about demons, muscles between the ears. Demons to conquer from the neck up, never mind physical demons. So, And then you help these kids conquer these demons, um, um, Cameron, right? Yeah. And, and they get to this place where they deserve to win. And, right. and, and they work hard. And, and you want it for them so fucking bad. <laughs> and well. when it doesn't happen... It hurts. Does yes. this sound familiar at all to you? Man, it's more, <laughs> more, more times than not. You know, us as coaches is that, you know, we, we get to a place where, you know, same thing. I've had teams where we, we're right there. We're on, the, we're on the gap of, you know, us winning a match and us losing a match. I'll never forget. I think it was my second or third year coaching. Um, and I'm coaching a girls team. Uh, and our 18s were in the match to get into the gold bracket. Um, to play for, you know, I think it was actually in the quarterfinals to play them, the number one seed Metro American at their big tournament. Um, and we're, we're in the quarterfinals and we won our first match of the day. And, you know, we're, we won the first set, lost the second set. We were down 13 to eight mm. and we battled back. We like battled back. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, guys, like you have nothing else to lose. Like you, you just got to lay it all out there. Um, and like you said, us coaches, we can we can tell you what's going to happen. We can tell you what's going to happen in two or three plays. Um, but the thing is all about execution. And you get to a point where for every loss, you feel it more than the kids do and more than the players do, whether it's on a professional level, on a junior club level. 
Um, and, it, and it's a selfless thing. You know, it's all about being who you are as an athlete, you know, is that being able to play and coach such talented kids, but then from the player aspect, also being on that side of being, whether it's in doubles and beach or sixes with indoor, is, you know, being that, 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 that athlete that has to suffer that loss. So I think that's the thing is, you know, I could go through numerous experiences, but at the end of the day is, you know, you continue to grow. And at the end of the day is you got to be able to take that step. And that's the difference between the best, the best and the kids that are right there. Yeah. And that's what you try and feed to all your kids saying, you know, like you, you don't want to be able to tell the story of you right there because it's how hard now you're working in practice. How, what are you doing on your off time, you know, and be able to take the time to be coachable and to be dynamic, to be able to grow as an athlete, as a player, as a young man or woman, and be able to, again, take that next step. So, yeah, man, I've been there way too many times, and it hits it hits in a different spot, definitely. For me, it's it only happened to me twice because I, for, for volleyball, and only for volleyball, I keep moving forward. I'm always moving forward. Um, you know, I helped Justin at Baruch College. Turn right. that turn that team from like seventh in the worst conference in, in the NCAA to like a Final Four appearance. So uh, we lost in the they lost in the Final Four. It's okay, whatever. You know Hunter High School. You know, um, bunch of smart kids try to turn them into volleyball players. Four years later, thirty eight and one record. You know we won the PSALs, but there was some heartbreak in between of that and this and that. But oh, yeah. every time we lost, I would just go straight to the video room and look. Everything else, dude, everything else in my life, I, I'm good at doing nothing. I could sit still. <laughs> I could sit sit still and not do shit. So, um, right. but, so that was only one or two times in my life that I, I think it caught me because like nationals is over, right? Uh, I mean, right. well, no, we still had the silver to play for the next day, but, but there was this long, you know how nationals, you play one pool a day, right? And there's this long gap for you to either just watch videotape or, or mull, celebrate a win or mull over a loss. And that's probably why. That's probably why, right. dude, you know? Right. So actually, I have it right here. This was match point. We're at 14-13, and um, they switch up so we can, you know, get a better block on their big guy, Cliff. Sorry, let's do this. All right. Now you need to fucking play. <laughs> I'm giving it about five seconds because uh, cause I had a bunch of videos. I had, um like, you and... um. Ladig, I wanted to put you guys on that too. So I'll wait. I'll wait till that starts up again. Um, so let's go to the beach volleyball scene. We are I had a conversation with like dealing with your partner. All right. Um, you ride a wave of emotions where that you handle very well, but maybe your partners don't. Like if your partner tried to ride the same wave, uh, the old saying is big waves crash. The, my endorse saying is for every five points you get high, you give up nine on a low. Right. Um, how are how have you conquered that demon as far as making sure your partner doesn't get caught up in the storm where you can swim and they can't? Um, you know, it's and that's a real that's a real a question, of, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a lot of testing, you know. Um, but I will say I I owe a lot of respects to people who have definitely helped me understand what where my highs are and where my lows are. Uh, playing with people like Angel Dace, who him and I have qualified in the NVL, and, you know, we were a match away in the AVP. Yeah. Uh, you look at Chris Frazier. You look at guys who I played against, oh Jeff Samuels. You look at so uh, Ricardo. You look at Piotr. You look at all these guys. Um, and you start to understand that who you are as a player, uh, you got to know your highs and what, what exactly you bring. And I know me, myself, is that when I emotionally invest myself, is that everybody I've played with is also, it's, it's bigger than volleyball. You know, it's that off the court, they know who I am also. Um, and one person who I've battled with a lot, especially this past, this past season is, um, you know, Joe Sokol out of Columbus, Ohio. Him and I beat a lot of good teams. We beat Hudson Bates three different occasions this past summer. Uh, you know, we battle against uh, Evan Corey and Logan Weber, Chris Lewers. Um, I mean, we beat a lot of good teams. We were right there and competed with them. But it's one of those things where when you're talking about overcoming that wave is that um, it, I hate to say it, but at this level, it's a grown man's game. And, you know, but you also got to be able to know that your partner is going to I'm going to give everything I can, you know, for, for my but for my other half. Um, and you look at all those guys is one one person who definitely has who is definitely a, a balance is, is Angel, you know. Uh, Angel is one of those people where I know where his highs are. He knows where mine are, and we definitely play that that playing field pretty nice. That's a, that's a good team. Um, 
That is a that's yeah. a good team because of because of the mental toughness, and yeah. the, and then the, and the thick skin. Absolutely, and that's the thing. You know, we've we've played t- people like I even said it. We played this past summer. We won the last tournament we played together. Uh, and TJ Cloud was one of the first people I played against. I'll never forget. It was the first tournament Angel and I played together six years ago. We played against him and Brian Tillman in the finals. Um, and you talk about that time, Brian Tillman was in his prime. I mean, he still is an absolute monster. And TJ at that time was a teacher of the game and a guy who's still winning a lot of tournaments and qualifying the NBL all the time. Um, and, and to hear, and we has, I sit down, I have a conversation to say, like, like you guys are hands down one of the best teams that I've ever played from a guy that I look up to um, and, and hold the deepest respect for. It's crazy. Um, so, I mean, when you're talking about thick skin, but also guys who just know and love the sport and know that it's bigger than me, that I've got to be able to make these plays and do what I got to do for somebody else. I think that's the difference when you talk about the, the best teams right now in the world, whether it be the Bali Vikings in a different country and or you look at Taylor, who you know, who's playing with Jake and you look with Trevor, with Try, and look at all these guys who are phenomenal people and guys I've seen trained with and so on. They're just, it's, it's different. But you got to know each other on and off the court to a point where it's, it's understanding that you got to give yourself, you know, 200% for the other person. Yeah, like Trevor and Tri is a very good example because I think their their mentalities uh, complement each other, right? And that's something else I've noticed. The higher the level it is, and when I say high level, I'm, I don't mean East Coast, East End, West End. I don't mean AVP. I mean, um, like, the if you look at the top 15 teams in the world, and Jake right. and Taylor are on that list. They've they've earned right. it, as well as Trevor and Try, who who've been out there getting more stripes in a Yankee uniform since they teamed up. Right? <laughs> hey, listen, Trevor. I know you hated to leave John Mayer, but that I mean, Try tries a good. You know, that's a good partner yeah. to have. You know, even though Mayer plays good with everybody. I mean, Mayer. Yes. What the fuck, man? How's that guy always left without a chair when the music stops? You know, um, he retired. Right. He re- we'll talk about him in a minute because he retired in 2018. Um, and we're going to talk about retired players coaching and just like playing less and this and that, but we'll, we'll explore that. Um, the higher the level you play, the more that becomes a non-issue. Yeah. I'll give you Nikolai and Lupo, Italy, <laughs> the Italians, right? Carambola yeah. and Rangiri and whoever Carambola plays with, non-issue. Um, what, Guto, Vitor? A little bit of um, who's this six eleven cat from Brazil? I can't um, I, I keep oh. great, great jump server as far as like yeah. dealing with partners are concerned. He's a he's the, probably, yeah. the big I'm, black guy. I'm no, sure exactly. he's a pain in the ass, Ivandro. Yeah. All right, yeah, yes. Ivandro. So the higher the level you are, the more that that becomes a non-issue. And to me, if that's an issue at that high level, it's probably more on you, which is why I brought up Ivan, yeah. Ivandro. I mean, there's been a lot of breakups because people can't get along with that dude, you know, sometimes. You know, Bruno Bruno Oscar Schmidt gets along with everybody, and I think they're probably still a team right now as we speak. Sean Ledig says, what's up? Cam plays the win. <laughs> Sean Ledig message. This is why I did his live stuff. But as you continue to get better, you're still mad young and you're still you and you only have an upside. I think you will notice that partners at that at that level welcome that energy. They welcome yeah. that enthusiasm. They welcome that in, that excitement. They welcome um the, the the beans, the beans kind of the bean style of playing volleyball. And as you and on a, a self-examination thing, as you continue to whatever if it's problematic at that level, that's when you examine yourself. You right. feel me? You got you, got you got me on that, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely, man. You know, it's like when you talk about it and mm-hmm. another guy who is a good friend of mine and uh, two guys in particular who play with such high energy um, and kind of play, people kind of say, I play with that swag, mm-hmm. uh, to say the least. Um, and one, perf- one person is J.D. Hamilton. Another guy is Evan Corey. Both guys from down south. Uh, talking about, I know, down from Sean's area. But um, played and played against Evan way too many times this summer uh, and have played with JD over New York. And, you know, but we look at those guys is that they don't care if you like them or don't is that they, they just play with that swag and they play with that mentality and they play with all that energy. Um, you know, they both won a ton of big tournaments. I've been in a ton of big matches and be a ton of big teams uh, win or lose though. They don't, they don't change who they are, or what they do. And that's the one thing I always say to myself is I'm never going to change who I am as a person, or as a player. And, um, you know, like you said, all the best players welcome that. Uh, but it's also being able to play with some of those best players is knowing 
what is enough and where you can get to and how to use it in a positive way. Yeah. Um, Cause I've definitely been, had to have been sat down and I'm in my young age from guys who are older and more experienced who have won bigger and better tournaments who, you know, just have that knowledge to say, Hey, like you, you, it's not, that's too much. It's not, that's not what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and, but that's a learning curve, you know what I mean? And that's what makes, that's what gets the better players and the best players to where they are. But those are, um, the, yeah, those, but those are the conflicting forces. Sorry, finish exactly. what you're going to say. I'm sorry. No, you're good. You know, it's like you said, it's a the, conflicting, the conflicting forces and force. it's, you're, you're learning and you keep growing and you look at people who I've actually learned a lot from. And I, it's like Jeff Samuels, uh, him and I have, when I first started playing, I'll never dude. forget. I was like, man, dude, like. I, I, I could respect this guy. And then all of a sudden I played against him for the first time at 19. I was like, dog, I don't, who, who is this guy? Who does he think he is? And I was like, I don't, I, I don't know where he's from. I don't know his first or last name, but now I look at Jeff and we've talked about it every time we play against each other and we're around each other is that, is that same mentality, man. And he's just, he's just that hungry, go get it cat mentality. So let's jump off this bridge and on the Jeff Samuels thing and jump back on Jeff Samuels for everybody listening was um for, i think for a long time was like the only true african-american um like main draw guy in the avp i mean if you count miles maguitatia or whatever samoan and this right. and that, but um okay maybe a couple of light-skinned brothers but this man's blackness does not sneak up on you okay <laughs> all right you don't think of him and be like i'm he's dominican man no that boy is a straight up uh michigan psychic blood brother <laughs> okay <laughs> Right. And by the way, got to know him a couple of years. We become really good friends, brother from another mother. The respect I have for him is profound. Um, yeah, what I was saying before, the conflicting forces are the people who welcome that energy and for the people who are raised to believe that, you're, that your big wave is going to crash because they don't know kinds of, they don't, they don't know people like you. And right. they they're right in the sense that you I there's so few people that are like that. I can name names. There's you. All right. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's weird because I came up with this yesterday. I was like, what about canned beans? Holy shit. I'm right. Um, there's I'll give you another. I'll give you a, a woman. Fallon for marijuana. <laughs> Starts high, stays high. The, the, her, right. her face is I'm going to take your lunch money. Do something. Right. You know, and but it doesn't crash. You know, right. like some coaches are like, hey, listen. She's, she was that way the whole set. Wait for it. Wait for it. It's coming down. And, was, and when it does, we're going to get her. And I'm like, still, <laughs> still waiting, dude. Right. Still waiting, dude. I'm still waiting. Um, yeah, so the cool thing is when you grow up in a region or when you, when you play and you have partners that understand you, like you said, that's the challenge. I grew up um, hustling in New York, playing grass tournaments in, you know, Sherwood, Connecticut, or the, has or the racetracks in Jersey um, right. with a guy named Bernard that was high all the time. Kid from Harlem. You know, I'm, I grew up Flatbush, Brooklyn. We okay? I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm all right. All right. <laughs> Come on, you know? Right. But then I'll play with someone else. Uh, my friend Patrick Dietz, and he's he's a city guy too, but he, he needs yeah. to mediate That's that. a great dude. Yeah, and, and it's, by the way, just a super athlete, an all-sport athlete. He could throw a football from here to Brooklyn. He could dunk. You know, he reversed dunk with both right. hands. Um, played wide receiver at Hofstra before he played volleyball. Um, but he's the kind of guy, like, if, if I have a problem with a ref and I'm going at it with a ref one play later, they hit that motherfucker gonna get aced <laughs> you know but and i think and me in my mind you know because we we have growing up to do it because in my mind i think that's his fault i'm like if right. i talk shit back me up but that's not that's not for everybody and i sound like i'm dissing right. patrick i'm not because patrick patrick look he could he could do fire he could breathe fire too but i'm just using an example like in sherwood we it's weird because sherwood we play double a and we finished third, but we, we played open like and won and like one out, didn't even lose a set. So it's just it's weird how like certain things could bring it all the way down. And, you know, and, and Pat sometimes oh. plays to the level. Right. You play yeah. when it's good, when it's good. But but um, yeah, so that's one of the things I wanted to ask you about. I was curious about it. And I, then I was very, very sure that no one asked you before. I was pretty confident no one asked you before because it's an uncomfortable topic to some people, you know. Yeah, um, man. And I you think, know, you know, closing all that is that, you know, you look at. For me, uh, biggest and best tournament, favorite tournament I ever played in was it's a Post Town Rumble. It's something that it's a big grass tournament that happens up here on the East Coast, yeah. up in Pennsylvania. Uh, the biggest grass tournament in the country. Um, and I'll never forget, I played in a tournament with this guy, Garrett Dim. Uh, we know each other. We played club against each other growing up. 
Uh, and we played in the tournament, you know, a bigger grass tournament we won. I was like, dog, like, what do you think about running this this big one? He's like, all right, dude, let's run it. We go into this tournament, and uh, exactly, this is it. We're talking about a dog. I just want to watch this one play. I queued it up for this. I'm a mind reader. That's Kalinsky. Nice holds on your platform. And then... <laughs> no. Didn't mean to break your flow. Go ahead. <laughs> no, dog. That's it. I mean, it's one of those things where you know, playing in playing in that atmosphere is crazy. But when you talk about someone who rides that big wave energy and it never falls off, Grim? is you can ask everyone who was there for forty eight hours. The, oh, we Gary rode did. a yeah. big man energy. Don't care who you are, where you're from, if you're an ABP guy or not. And this man is just, he, he's scared of nothing. And when I say every time we play together, it is something different because there's not much talked about. We don't talk very much on the court. And he's a machine. It's just one of those I saw two of your matches. I was watching two of your matches, just bringing myself up to speed or whatever. Not on the Pottstown Rumble. I know the Pottstown Rumble. I, I played double A and yeah. open, and I finished fifth on both, like in the early 2000s. Best I could do, whatever. But <laughs> educating the people at home before I, before I chime in here, tell the masses, because, you know, we can make it about us, but we got people listening that don't know. Uh, right. Tell the masses how many... An average of how many teams um, enters open for the Pottstown? So Rumble. usually Pottstown open uh, for the men's side is well over 130, 150 yep. teams. Yeah. Um, and it's a two-day tournament. Um, you know, top two make it off every net. And, and that highlight I just showed everybody was from the quarterfinals. Yes. So that's after <laughs> match, number, that's match number five on day two. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's a lot of volleyball, man. It's it's a lot of good, good high-level volleyball. Jim's a um, machine, though. Know, Duh. Dim I is mean, a machine. It, I mean, he didn't. He, he was like, save the tips for the waiters. This guy was hitting the whole time. It, uh, yeah, you talk about this. Someone who doesn't tip a roll. The, Garrett Dim doesn't know what a roll shot is. Uh, you, can, I can put him on every highlight film. He has bounced more balls down the line than I've ever. I'm talking two to three feet both ways. Um, and he's one of those guys where you can block him. He's just going to hit even harder and break your fingers. So, um, you know, he's, he's that go-getter cat. And that's why I love playing with him. Um, but we don't lose often. Uh, you know, we, we played two, or I guess the last Boston Rumble, we played Eric Baranek and Billy Kalinske. Yeah, Billy uh, Kalinske. And it was, it was a, it was a match, man. It was a, it was a, it was a fight, but you know, Garrett also, when you talk about Billy, one of the most disciplined and technically sound blockers I have ever seen. Um, you yeah. know, it was just, it was a slow paced game, something that he and I were not used to playing. Um, but when you play two guys who are straight off the beach Eric slowed the game down, but Billy, I felt like I would play that match for two and a half hours watching this man just walk back and serve a high float serve to mm -hmm. Garrett, and it was so slow. But man, it was—it's a battle, man. Yeah, Billy's about stabbing your gas tank. <laughs> Billy, Billy is about um, he's very good at stabbing your gas tank he's very good and a lot of times he'll, he'll serve the lollipop because he wants to see what you look like in system and if he's getting higher on the block then you're on the approach and jump and if your set is tight enough a lot of times you and you'll, you'll hear him talk to Eric about this like he's he's gonna hit cross on this one one play I mean it's crazy I saw a case bear in shock he's like he's gonna go for a tip um, and, I'm, and I'm jumping this way and uh, talk about coaching and seeing the future he's very very good at seeing what you do in system and if you're and if you're beating him in system then he knows he's got to serve tougher it's this indoor thing that that i'm I, I played in europe for a couple of years like sometimes we don't jump sir sometimes they they're getting they're getting balls off of busted plays and now now all of a sudden the guy got a touch block here touch block there he just thinks he can do whatever he wants or serving system that sets a little tight because he thinks he could out jump you and then and then you clamp him but but kalinsky's very very like you said he's on my pound for pound list for um for um blockers <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude i mean first-hand experience you know him and again now being good friends with eric it's like talking about two of two of the best and what they do and i mean names who don't get thrown around you know you talk about taylor crab everyone knows who he is yeah. you know you talk about phil dahlhauser and nick lucena all these well-known names and eric is definitely on his way up yeah. um and billy been in the game for way too long and still is still just scratching the surface and getting better um but man, Eric's, when you talk about, Eric's a different animal, though. He's, dude, when yeah. I say you talk about a guy who will just who not only will dig every ball, 
mm-hmm. and then cut you up. But then all of a sudden turn around and just one hand Kong block you just mm-hmm. because. Yeah. You know, you watch him and Andy And then walk like and then walk away like he shot the sheriff. Bro, <laughs> you watch that force and Eric, like they put Andy out there on the big blocker and mm-hmm. Eric took over the whole match. Yeah. Like it was it's just his show. That dog has no fear and he's would a, run he's a every transition ball king. down your throat. He's a transition so, king. And yeah. I will say two very good things about Eric because I, I like to talk about him a lot because we had this conversation about people who are the same people regardless of who they talk to. He talks to Phil. He's, he's Eric. He talks to me. He's Eric. He talks to a high school kid. He's Eric. You know, I introduced him to, you know, my wife. He's he's Eric. My wife thinks he's a hunk right now. I'm a little jealous now. I'm a little, protect, <laughs> I'm a little protective of that shit. But um, the thing I liked about Eric is that he is constantly, constantly trying to be a better version of himself. Besides being the same person, and this is this is what this I call them a different animal because you you, you mentioned Nick, you mentioned Phil, you mentioned Taylor, you um these are all people that have respect and popularity for people who watch the sport. Right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about popularity and respect for people who watch the sport and people who never who don't know a damn thing about volleyball are now right. coming to watch that this this kid play. He's a South yeah. Bay prodigy. He's a Redondo kid. He made the main draw seven times with six different partners before yeah. he made his semifinals uh, with Bill Kalinske. So, and he, the guy gets dropped more more times or whatever. And I'm like, what the <laughs> hell? What the hell is he doing differently? That that look at look at the top defenders. All right, let's just take Nick and Taylor away because of, these are some would consider them unfair comparisons, though I don't. Right. What's he doing better or worse than John Mayer was doing? I mean, John right. Mayer. Okay, John Mayer allows the, the 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 ball to come to him, so he doesn't make a lot of moves like Eric does. John, so because John doesn't have to move for anyone. But think about every other defender we're talking about. Let's let's talk about you. Let's talk about, um, I don't know. Let's talk about Riley no. McKibben. Let's talk about. Came shock. I mean, I, I could, what the we, hell? We could what the hell? Through, yeah, Rosie. Let's talk go, about all we these could people. Go through all these names and this guy is just, is that I think the only thing is, and that's the only thing I say is about a lot of the kids who are around my age. You know, you're talking about Eric, and you're talking about all those greater defenders. JD Hamilton is another example. All these guys who who are just we're we're doing the same things. You know, we're making great moves, but it's the thing of, you know, you look at Eric now. I don't I don't know if there's a ball that that Taylor's getting that he hasn't gotten 27 times over again. You know, you look he at Kane, left who's right the same dude. thing, you know, and you're looking at just the consistency. I think it's just about the maturity thing. A lot of the older guys looking for guys who have done it and been in the game for a while um, who are just doing it, you know, but I think when you look at the, the powerhouse team, um, you look, you look at the dynamic duo who went and, who goes and wins the, the USA tournament down there, him and Andy, uh, I've known Andy for forever as, as well, uh, playing indoor with him with the, on the national team and so on and so forth. Um, you know, it's just, they're just two guys who are hungry and, you know, we, we talked at grass nationals down there in South Carolina, um, and, and talking about working out and training, but it's just, it's a mentality that it's either you got or you don't. And a lot of us young guys have it. Yeah. Um, and you're talking about a lot of people who should be worried. Logan Weber is definitely on his way up. Uh, Evan Corey is on his way up. Evan Corey is um, a savage, it, dude. I mean, you look at all these guys who are just hungry. Um, and, dude, it's just going gonna to take one quick break. And I'm telling you, I think this was a year for all for a lot of people for the AVP not to happen. So I think you're going to have a lot of surprises going into the main draw next year. Man. Well, the, main, the surprises started as early as uh, 2019. Um, yes. Look, Eric and um, Bill, qualifier, yeah. all the way to the semis. How do I know? I coached three of the fucking teams they that they went against. I coached Rob and Rob. They beat us in three sets. I actually got dropped by Earl and Jake, but so I but I, so I didn't coach him. But Arturo did. They they beat them. And in the first round, I was doing stats for Rafu and Ed. So and then all the way out of the losers bracket, in the in the in the, in the main draw. Right. So, but the thing. I had this thing called Manhattan Beach Top 10 Plays, and he fucking did hey, like a left and right drill. Oh, you have to see this. Body day. Bring it back. Let's see. So, I'll go here. It's basically. There it is.
So this is this, this, this I call this the left and right drill. Eric smells victory. This this dude got so I'm many digs. And mind you, this is a qualifier Number match. One, this is against right. Lotman and Derek Olson. He's got Matt Prosser, cancer survivor and everybody's favorite blocker. Watch this. How's that for a touch? And then how's that for a touch? The man is and look at him. Watch the watch the jig move. Eric gets the up and down. Eric this is what I thought he's gonna finish, but Olsen's Derek Olson's nobody's bitch, right? So, Transition, up and, and now set, this is Manhattan beat Sand. Now you know they're feeling. Now you now, you, now all, all of a sudden these harder hits Doug. are getting softer, outside, and they're just like, Lottman, who's gonna survive? Go to who's gonna Lottman blink first? He gets this out of the middle, wrist away, got it, and then shades fly. And the rest, I'm just gonna shut up because you need to hear this live. So, impossible. don't. It's some Spider Man shit there. Spider Man, Spider Man, <laughs> Spider -Man shit. I actually put like Marlo from The Wire that, you know, yeah. don't seem possible when Omar jumped out of the fifth floor window. I don't know if you yes. watched The Wire. No. Oh, um, yeah. Yes. Yes. When he, um, Felicia and, and Chris caught up to him and he was like on the balcony, he had nowhere to yeah. go. And that mess, <laughs> this dude just jumped in. Marlo's like, which window? He's like, that he goes, he goes, <laughs> don't seem possible so right but that's um pretty cool highlight i always share because I, I every year i do like a top 10 plays for like one of the gold series um right. not as much now i mean i got i'm, I'm really busy dude and i'm a father so but right. um definitely congrats. huh the yeah, big man. congrats to you dad yeah man dude yeah i love it I, she's four this month she looks like queen denarii's for you, for listen, for you men listening at home, I'm going to give you guys a piece of advice. And I know I'm talking too much, but this is super necessary. Women have a look on their face that is a mixture of grief and anger. And it looks like this. They're mad at you and they want to flail, but at the same time, they're hurting. And men don't have this look, but we know it when we see it. Only women have this look. So if your girlfriend or your significant other looks like that, just be somewhere else. It's okay. I know she's she's going to say, I, I want you there for me. But no, she's there. She's going to tear you apart. Just be somewhere else if you see that look. And my kids got that look. <laughs> my, my child's got that look. <laughs> so, all right. Talk to me about Sean Ledig. And, and a great human being. He's on the podcast last weekend. And um, I think we just owe it to ourselves to give this man a shout out. And I also plugged in, um, you know, some highlights of no. you and him. So talk no, to me about, got, a little bit I, about Ledig. I, I, I have to, I have to be nothing but super honest. I would definitely not be even half of where I was out that man. Uh, he definitely took me under his wing when I was only 19, 20 years old. Said, "Look, I'll get you where you want to get to. You know, um, you know, we'll come train together. We'll do A, B, C, and D." This man taught me everything from life throughout volleyball, to working hard, to what the training aspects were, getting me involved with some of the greater, better coaches down there in Louisiana. Um, you know, talking about Joey, who's also training Evan and Ian and JD and all these great guys. Um, but no, Sean is a guy that is super respected, not only in the volleyball community, but and as a volleyball player, but also as a straight up human being. Uh, he's one of those people you can always count on, depend on, and is definitely for the people and not just for any one group or particular person. Uh, he's definitely fought on my side, been on my side through the worst and best days. Um, and we, man, we battled through some qualifiers together and battled some tough matches together. Um, but the dude has definitely pushed me to be a better, better human being and a better man, but also just wanting to be the best volleyball player. Let's go, baby. He got a silver medal. No I owe it deal. to myself to, to show a couple of clips of Sean <laughs> while we're talking. But Sean, listen, Sean was a former basketball player and a model. And, and the way he trains and the way he stays in shape and his nutrition is one of those things where he came into the gate as a, game as a late bloomer. But he was in better condition, uh, a physical and playing condition than a lot of people who were, who were 10, 15 years younger. Yeah. Still is, man. <laughs> I know, he still yeah, is. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm a little. I, look, he makes me challenge, uh, question my own sexuality. I think between him and Brandon <laughs> Clemens, you know, I'm, 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 I'm all about them hunks right now, dude. <laughs> I'm yeah. all about, yo, I'm all about them hunks. So tell the people at home that you, what you, uh, you're a teacher. Tell them what you teach. Yeah, dog. So I'm a teacher outside of doing all this volleyball stuff, but I'm an American Sign Language teacher. Uh, so life is life. Uh, so I teach American Sign Language for high school kids uh, down here in Maryland and 
yeah, outside of coach, that's what I do. What I grew up doing and my family, a lot of both my sisters do it as well. Um, so, yeah, man, it's, it's what I do. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Uh, Kevin Knight, who is listening to this live, says, Cam Beans, nightmare to play against, but always a great time afterwards. Uh, let this man tell his story. Favorite memory, Leon and Austin. Much, <laughs> much love. <laughs> All right, so long story short, uh, that was the tournament where me and Angel, long qualifying, man. That's we beat uh, Mark Fornicari and uh, JM in the first match in three. Turn around, then we played Honer and Logan Weber, and we beat them in two. And then we played um, Alex and game. Yamil. Alex and Yamil to get in, man. And uh, we battled. It was a long one. Lost in three. It was a tough one. Um but, dog, after that, you know, Kevin and I just started getting closer then. And I was like, man, what are you doing tonight? Let's go out. And everyone kind of separated, you know. So me and Kevin were like, dog, let's just go. Let's go see what's up happening in downtown Austin. And we'll meet up with all the boys later. So we go down there and we get into this bar. And it's a piano bar. And so there's live music that nice. We walk in there. <laughs> so Come on. It was, it was so quiet at first. And I was like, what is going on? Walk in there, order a drink. First, the bartender is, is from Maryland. So I'm like, oh, psh, cool, we're in. So we started drinking. She didn't charge us like anything the first five rounds. So chill, we're chilling. We just tip her out. All of a sudden, this woman starts singing. When I said I thought Kevin fell in love the moment this woman opened her mouth, both of us looked at each other sideways. I was like, dog, we like, can't have leave. You, have you ever finding seen anything out, like that? Yeah. Dog, finding out we get there, and this woman's like, she's on Apple Music, and we're listening to her, and everyone's going crazy for this woman. Dog, she comes off stage, not only is her voice beautiful, but I thought, not only was I drunk, but at the same time, I swear to God, Kevin was about to go walk on the stage, grab her hand, ask him to marry right then and there, man. But dog, it was a good time. A, a night in Austin that is definitely never forgettable. Crazy. Yeah, man. Um, love me some Kevin. By the way, my, my major in college was my BFA is in acting. So, so if you're oh. ever in California and they ask you about, um, there's there's a name called Y2 Jason. That's my my that's like my like performance name because I look, right. I lost a bunch of weight and I let my hair grow and I look like Chris Jericho, like the the, the wrestler. <laughs> um, so they were calling me Y2J, Y2 Jason. Yeah, um, but yeah, my first song was uh, Sweet Transvestite um, at, at um, karaoke. And nice. then at a piano bar sang All of Me, uh, John Legend, <clears throat> um, which I'm, yeah, I don't, everyone's like, what's your go-to song? And I'm like, I sound like a dick by saying this, but I'm like, I don't have one. Whatever, yeah. whatever I feel like fucking singing that night. So, um, yeah, that's so cool. That's a great story. But Kevin Knight, I'm glad we mentioned him because I was on the topic before the podcast started on just having interesting people. They're like, oh, you know, you should have this gold medalist. Oh, you should have this player. You should have that people. I'm like, I just, no, I just, I just want interesting people. I just right. want interesting people. The difference between me doing this podcast right now and doing the beat, because I was doing the beat reporting for volleyball one on one, is right. you have a list, right? You know, like shit. I gotta, I gotta talk to Phil. Phil's like not now. I'm like, all right, I gotta wait and get get at him later. You know what I'm saying? And and the, the cool thing about this is, there are people that want to be on the podcast, and there are people that I call to come on the podcast, and they either, it's so liberating. Either you do, or you don't. Kevin right. Knight is an interesting person. The man is a molecular biology, biology scientist. I don't even know the, the name of nomenclature for it. You, my man, are an interesting person. I am gonna take the week off from telling you who, people who are not interesting because I, you know, you, we know I could do that, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna right. do that today. I'm gonna, today's a good day, okay? Yesterday was a bad day. My Buffalo Bills got Hail Mary. Um, <laughs> ooh, but I'm, the reason why I'm even bringing this up Cam, you're an interesting person. I want interesting people on this show. I don't even care if they play volleyball anymore. I mean, we're this is episode sixty six. We're we're beyond that right now. This this thing has Absolutely. this thing has legs. This thing has legs of its own. It's 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 uncontrollable, and and I like the way it's going. And I and I love what we talked about today, man. Um, right. And I know at some point we both got to get get back and get back and do some real work, but. At some before we go, could be now, could be a couple of minutes from now. Please tell people, um, as far as the Chesapeake Lee Volleyball Academy, for people that want to know more about it, and for people 
um, who are interested in what, in, in what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, man. So we, um, you know, we, we, we offer ages from 14 and up, you know, we're, we're expanding every year. We're trying to get bigger and better. Um, we run a summer camp series uh, and a clinic series throughout the entire summer as well as the fall. Um, but anyone in the DMV, even up in the PA area, we have kids travel down as well as up. Um, you're talking about a coach that is now sent in six years, sent over 50 kids to go play college volleyball. And over 90% of kids going into their freshman year play right away. I've never had a kid not play their freshman season. Um, so, again, we are a college-ready program, so we don't just say our name out there and throw my brand and my personal name out there just, just because. Is that I'm all about productivity. I'm about numbers. Um, and when you're talking about a kid, and if, you, if your goal and long-term goal is to make it, that's what I do. It's my job. I put forth my extra time and energy to make sure that I'm honest and true with you, other college coaches, and to make it happen, man. And so we we have kids from the youngest right now. Uh, you know, we have a lot of specimens right now in our younger classes. Particularly yeah. out of the middle. Dog, man. I mean, we have these kids. <laughs> uh, an example right now. Is I saw the video. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is wild, man. We have um, this kid, Sydney Lewis, who's a sophomore at Delaware State. Okay. Man, she, she came in as a cheerleader, a uh, sophomore year of high school. I love to tell this story. Sophomore year of high school, never played volleyball day in her life. She's a six six one, six two giant. Uh, and she's built. She's not like one of those skinny toothpick girls. This girl, when she walks in the gym, she's a bully. She looks like a bully. And, man, this girl is just What's her an name again? Animal. Sydney Lewis. Okay. And she's a middle at Delaware State. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget every time her senior year of warm-ups, you know, we train her all sophomore year. Plays on our bottom 16s team is really just a big body. Junior year comes in and starts for our 18s team. And then her senior year just takes off. Gets a lot of big name offers, you know, from Big Ten schools, the ACC, the SEC. And she was like, I just want to be able to go to HBCU and be able to do my thing. And I was like, all right, cool. Man, when you look at this kid, every time she blocks her head's over the net, every time she swings, balls are like eight feet. I mean, yeah. it is just obnoxious, man. So, I mean, you talk about kids who just come in with the mindset to want to get better and want to play at the highest level. It's what I do, man. That's what I love to do. I take the time and energy to make the kids around me better. So, yeah, check it out. Um, this is um, actually Elijah Griffin. Elijah Griffin. So, yeah, this is Aaliyah this Griffin. Uh, is she, just... got, she's the senior this year. She's, she's an animal. <laughs> Uh, girl who's Look at six her relative foot, ease. Yes, <laughs> just, man. You're talking about this kid. <laughs> she thunders off, man. Like I said, we talk about getting the best kids in our gym. This kid is definitely a kid who comes in, came in this summer and said, hey, Coach Cam, need some help. Um, you know, I want to be able to get to the highest Christ. level. Dog. The, and that's just that's just the drip drop. That's just man. the tip. <laughs> the iceberg, right? <laughs> so, yeah. I'm so glad you're doing your work. There's an old saying, Yogi Berra, it's my guy. I'm a Yankee, you know, boom. Mm, yeah. If you enjoy your job, you never have to work a day in your life. And this sounds like what you're doing. Uh, definitely sounds like what I'm doing. Enough of, I'm not talking about me no more. Enough about me. This is you. This is the podcast. And it, I love seeing that kind of enthusiasm because sometimes – our strength is our weakness. Right. Ask me what my strength is. Every every college interview, I personalize my work. I live in a video room like a hermit, night and weekends, that you don't pay me to care. So what's your weakness? I personalize my work. <laughs> like you know, that, and sometimes man. when it doesn't happen the way it hurts. But but this, what you're talking about, this level of enthusiasm is why you get into it because you see the productivity. You 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 tell you, you tell your girls this is where I want to go. This is a goal. And if and if you're down with this, if this is what you really want, then let's let's work. And when it works out, and when it works, and then they see you see the fruition of their game, and you see what we just saw in that video. You're just like yes. This is serious business, yeah. you know, because you said what you just said with no chauvinistic conceit. It's just it's, it's just about giving people what they want for the sport you love. God right. bless my dude. God bless. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. damn, let's get let's end on that. man. No. <laughs> Anything else man. you'd like to add um, the site, maybe the site? Uh, for yeah, absolutely. City. If you guys are interested, uh, go to ChesapeakeEliteVA.com. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's in there. You guys can go check out all of our about what our what our mission is, what our goal is, what our teams look like this year. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of it all, as you know, outside of the club stuff and coaching stuff, 
Uh, I want to say and throw a big shout out to not only Sean Ladig, Angel Dache, and some of the sponsors from Skyball, yeah. um, to you know, to a ton of other people out there just helping support me along my journey throughout my years. Yeah. Um, you know, the AVP, the NVL, everybody out there who helped me be who I am. But you know, Jason, you're the guy, my man. You've been you've seen me since I was 19, so you yeah. know, I'm glad to be able to come out here and be able to show my love for the game and what I do each and every day. So glad I was able to be here, man. Yeah, I actually. Th- Saw so you maybe even earlier than that, or, or at nineteen. I think you guys played Baruch or Hunter, and I'm I'm a city guy, and I thought I saw you then. You're, I mean, there's only there's only like two black guys on that team, so yeah, or whatever. So, all right, yeah. so cool. All right, so all right, just want to make sure we don't have any fan questions. Make sure we answer as many of these as we can. I think we covered everything. Good. All right, everybody. Cameron Beans may love you, but I can't stand you. So we are out of here. All right. For all of you at home, for all of you on your iPad at Starbucks, for all of you on your desktop, who runs the world? Old school, old school. From my man Cameron Beans, this is episode 66. I am Jason DeBeas, and I speak for both of us when I say, stay with me after this. We're out. Boom. Come check out the Option Podcast on OptionDB.com. It's also available on iTunes and Spotify and on YouTube under the NY Varsity Sports Handle. You're going to love what you hear.